Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantelle and today I'm going to show you how I created little nifflers from the Fantastic Beast franchise. Let's get started. Nifflers, cute as they are, I can only imagine what they would be like to keep as a pet. The Niffler, for those of you who don't know, was a magical beast with a long snout and a coat of black fluffy fur. They were attracted to shiny things which made them wonderful for locating treasure. But that also meant that they could wreak havoc if kept or let loose indoors. Nifflers in general were usually harmless. Now that I've got my tools, let's get started on the project. From some tin foil, I start by sculpting out the base shape of a Niffler. In this video, I'm creating Teddy, which is the main Niffler in the Fantastic Beasts movies. I'm also creating two baby Nifflers in lighter colors. Newt Scamander wrote in his book that Nifflers were black haired. In Fantastic Beasts, the crimes of Grindelwald, the hair of the baby Nifflers are shown with other colors, suggesting that other colors were rare or that Niffler hair darkens when they age. After sculpting out the main shape with tin foil, I cover it with polymer clay. I'm using Super Sculpey Original. I will leave the links for the products used in this video in the description box below. Although they are excluded from the film versions, Harry and his classmates study both boat truckles and nifflers in their care for magical creatures class in the novels Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Here are the other two nifflers, and now it's time to put them in the oven and bake them. And apparently I need to check my oven temperature because I burnt the clay and this was the very first time ever that that happened. Moving on to adding fur to the nifflers. I have this faux fur yarn which I will cut up so it becomes flocking, which can then be applied to anything with glue. This is great for miniature fur. As the Okami egg is hatching in the bank just after Newt has apparated, Hedwig's theme can faintly be heard on the scoring the scene. Once done, it should look something like this. Very fine tufts of fluff. Of course, you can also use normal yarn. Take a few strands of yarn and brush it with a metal wire pet brush. Start at the ends and work your way up. The cast was not allowed to take their scripts home and had to lock them in the safe at the end of the day. It should look something like this when you're done and then you can cut it like the faux fur yarn. Nifflers had a pouch on their bellies, which held far more than at first seemed possible, like the effects of an undetectable extension charm on a container. Now that the nifflers are cooled down, it's time to paint them. I like to use miniature paints as their coverage is just wonderful. For the nifflers, I use a variety of browns, black and white. Nifflers were kept by goblins to borrow for treasure. You might have noticed that for the large Niffler I've taken the arms off. This is so that I can paint everything more easily and put something in his hands before I glue the arms to the body. During the early scene in the bank where the Niffler is causing commotion, Newt uses the spell Alohomora to open the vault and Pertificus Totalus to incapacitate the bank manager. Both spells were also used by Hermione Granger in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was released 15 years and two days after Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Here are the tiny nifflers done as well and I've given them some different colors and now it's time to move on to the flocking. To apply the flocking, I'm covering the niffler where I want the fur to be with Gorilla Wood Glue and then gently apply the fur to the glue. 
Nifflers were gentle by nature and could even be affectionate towards their owners, however they could destroy belongings looking for sparkly objects, and for that reason it was inadvisable to keep them as a house pet. It looks like a little ball of fluff at first, but once it's dry you can brush off the excess with a soft brush and apply more if necessary. Moving on to some of the other things for this miniature, from some gold Sculpey 3 clay I'm going to make some coins. I've rolled out some clay on a fairly thin setting on a pasta machine and cover it with cling wrap. This will make so the coin cuts clean and the clay won't stick to my tools. These little tools are from Little Funky Flames. I will leave a link to them in the description box below. Then I'm just pressing the sizes of the tools that I want the coins to be into the clay. Then peeling away that cling film very slowly so that the coins stay on the glass plate. And then peeling away the excess clay. Apparently it was also implied that Nifflers could turn vicious if provoked, as the second Niffler released into Dolores Umbridge's office apparently tried to take a chunk out of her leg. Before baking them, I brush on some Pearl X mica powder in the color Aztec Gold to give it even more shine. Newt's Commander's Niffler Teddy escaped twice from his suitcase during his visit to New York in 1926 and tried to rob the Steen National Bank and a jewel shop. After baking, I can simply remove them with a paint scraper. And here we have tiny coins, perfect for tiny Nifflers. For the Niffler cage that you can very briefly see in a Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald, I made this shape from layers of foam board and the base of chipboard. This is going to be my sort of mold for the Niffler cage. I made it so that the black foam board piece is removable. I'm applying glue to the base of the chipboard and glue on a piece of burlap. Now I know where I have to glue on the other end of the burlap, I can remove the black foam board piece and, for extra strength, I'm gluing on a piece of cardstock in between the two layers of burlap, which will be the top of the cage. For the back of the cage, I'm tracing around the cage on a piece of cardstock and cut it out, which I will then cover in burlap. During the 1994-1995 school year, Rubius Hagrid used Nifflers as part of the fourth year's Care of Magical Creatures class. Prior to the class, he hid leprechaun gold in the earth in front of his hut. He paired each student with a Niffler and promised a prize to whoever found the most gold. In this screenshot you can see that there is some light inside the Niffler cage, so I wanted to add some too. I'm adding some fairy lights to the inside of the cage and attach the battery pack to the back of the cage and cover it with burlap. During Dolores Umbridge's tenure as headmistress of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Lee Jordan used the levitation charm to levitate Nifflers through her office window to wreck the office. One tore her office apart, searching for shiny objects, and tried to gnaw the rings off her stubby fingers. The front of the cage has small metal bars up to about halfway the front. I'm creating that out of toothpicks and paint them gold. Eddie Redmayne cut his wig himself and did it in the dark. 
He did so because Faye Hammond, hair designer for the film, believed Newt would often need to groom on ships and other less than ideal circumstances. Hammond handed a bewildered red mane a pair of rusty kitchen scissors and instructed him to use them in a nearby closet. Then at the front of that is another door. These are cut with my Cricut machine from cardstock and unlayer them for some more strength. I've also cut some little hinges so the door can open and close. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them takes place in early December 1926, which is only a couple of weeks before Voldemort, the main antagonist of the Harry Potter films, was born in the books December 31st, 1926. Whether this is also the date of birth in the movies is unclear since the timeline in the movies has been altered somewhat from the books. In Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows novel, Sinophilius Lovegood is in possession of the horn of an arumpant, which he insists is the horn of a crumple horned snorkak. Hermione mentions to be careful around it because she knows that an arumpant horn is prone to exploding. An arumpant appears in this film as one of the beasts Newt needs to recapture, and the species' explosive and generally destructive nature is portrayed on film for the first time. Then finally I'm brushing on a darker brown acrylic paint to make the burlap look a bit older and darker. Let's put this all together. And this is it for this video. It was so much fun to create. I'm really happy with how Teddy and the Nifla cage came out. The lights added so much more to it. The closure is made with some small magnets and chain. All my social media can be found in the description box below and if you're new here, welcome! Don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos and of course, become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!